Hey, welcome back to my first vlog here. We're going to call it the Vintage Vlog. And I'm going to show you a couple things I've been working on in the shop. Especially dust collection for the new radial arm saw. The new old radial arm saw. It's actually really old DeWalt. You probably see it in my last video. I'll put a link up there. You can check that out. So although I've been sort of reluctant to do it, I think I will start doing maybe a vlog once in a while. It won't be a weekly thing, but just kind of like shop update. I know that's pretty common, but uh, I'll give you an idea of some of the things I'm working on maybe behind the scenes. And I appreciate all the support for the channel. The channel's been growing pretty fast and I appreciate you guys watching and clicking subscribe. Please share my videos and uh, spread the word because it is really encouraging and makes me want to get down here and make some more videos. And I have a lot of different projects in mind over the next couple months here, especially in the winter where I have a chance to be more inside and there's less yard work to do of course. One of the new things that you might notice is the, the quality of this video is going to be a lot better. I finally was able to invest and get a uh, Canon T5i camera and uh, combined with this microphone the sound should be better, the quality of the videos should be better coming out and I won't just have to be limited to the quality of my Android phone which is what I was using for most of the time for most of the videos. And also on my other channel, I do have a science channel that's called Brainstem. And that's mainly uh, something I use for school. I'm a full-time teacher, teach physical science in the middle school. And so I use that channel as a, a place to put up videos showing my kids how to do certain things. And uh, that channel has actually been growing pretty steadily and, and becoming more successful. So I'm going to put more time into that also and, and do some more science-related videos on that. I have a lot of ideas and projects that I, I build for my kids at school. And so I'm going to start putting stuff up on there too. So check that out. The link's in the description. So for the radio arm saw, what I have new here is the dust collection. And I built this box back here that you can see. And I also drilled some holes in the fence. And that allows the air to be sucked into there. And the box is enclosed in this V shape here, this triangle. And then I have, um, this will slide in here. I was uh, cutting dados. So I have a, a thicker uh, slot here from the dado blade. But that throws most of the dust back, goes through these holes, goes through here, and gets sucked up there. There's also a ramp here to suck up dust into the top of this little box. So like most of my projects, I'm going to use pretty much what I have on hand. I try not to go out and spend a lot of money on these things, try to reuse things that I can find around. So this actually came with another radial arm saw I got, which was a Craftsman. These inch and a half blast gates came with that Craftsman radial arm saw that I picked up. It was a nine inch. And so I reused those. Didn't have exactly the right fittings here, but I was able to seal them up with duct tape and get them pretty close. And so there's no leaks in here or anything like that. What's nice about this is I can just turn it on and off with this blast gate on the top here. This one can operate for the radial arm saw. And then I also have another one here that I can open up and that can attach to this side of the saw and catch any chips that are coming off on this side. And then I can just easily take this off and when the dust collector's on, that's just resistance fit in there. When I have the dust collector on, I can turn this port off. I can clean up any extra chips that are around with this as a vacuum hose then. And that has a little bit of a reach over on this table. Next, I'll show you a little bit more about this table here. This was a, a door that I uh, picked up from my brother-in-law. And it was originally on my workbench. And I took it off and cut it down a little bit. And I used, reused that for, the, for this side of the infeed table. So down below here is a cabinet that came with this radial arm saw. So amazingly, I only paid $30 for the steel cabinet. This is from the 60s and this radial arm saw. And this steel cabinet is, is uh, holding up this side of the table. I decided to use it that way so that I didn't have to put legs over here. I could just use this side to hold this table. And this table's pretty sturdy. It's not meant to be like a heavy duty workbench, but still it's nice and solid surface to have as an infeed table that's level with this. In here you can see I'm storing some extra things. I have my air compressor and nail gun in there and my circular saw and things like that. So it's good extra storage space for this old cabinet. So to hold up the table on this side, you can see that I used some treated posts that I had left over, and then I was able to make a set of legs on this side and attach them to some runners that I have supporting the table that go over and on top of the steel cabinet. The runners allowed me to bring this up a little bit higher so that I can match the height over there. Also on the bottom of these legs, what I put was T-nuts and bolts, and that gave me some adjustment so I can make sure everything's pretty much level. I did the same thing. There's leveling feet on the bottom of the steel cabinet and there's leveling feet on the bottom of the base 
to the radial arm saw. So all getting all of those level with a concrete floor that's not exactly level was important and that worked. Also over here, I'm bringing it a little closer. Over here you can see I just mounted my small router over here. I had a space cut out. I actually took this table and used it for a radial arm saw that I had that was that craftsman I mentioned before. And I cut this out for the post of that radial arm saw. And since I had that hole there already, what I decided to do was just mount this here temporarily. It's just kind of resistance fit in there. It's going to slide it in there. And then I have a nice little router set up if I need it um, just to round some corners over. So the piping for the dust collector goes up the top and I have a finished ceiling in the basement here, so I just used some wire to wire the pipe in place and ran a straight line over to the other side where the dust collector's in the corner. I'll take you over there and show you the uh, setup over there. But you can see this is just four inch pipe that runs straight down there and it's just being held up by some wire that I wired to the grid of this drop ceiling. Over here in this corner, you can see the line, four inch line comes over, runs straight down, and then it's teed off right there. So you can go under here and you can see that. I have it teed off there, and then running over to the dust collector into the chip separator. And then over on the wall side there, it drops down again, runs along the floor, and then it's gonna run over to where you can see I have the chop saw, and I have my hose that can stretch out to the rest of the shop. Another piece of iron I just picked up was this old Craftsman scroll saw. And this is a beast. This thing is 24 inches deep. And it sits on the original stand with the original motor. And I have it tucked over here because I'm running out of room in my shop. Um, right now it's missing the guides. I'll bring you in a little closer here and see if you can see that. So it's missing the guides here. And that makes it cut a little bit wonky. The blade sends, tends to drift. So there's a mounting hole right there. I think I'll make some guides with some roller blade bearings that I have left over and I can use that to maybe guide the blade a little bit better, but it works great. It's fine. Um, I amazingly paid only $10 for this. So I could not pass it up for $10, even though I didn't really need it and I don't have the room for it. There's no way that I was gonna pass that up for 10 bucks. Hey, so thanks again for stopping by to check out what's happening in the shop. I'm going to be doing some other videos this week, but if I don't get them out before Christmas, have a Merry Christmas and enjoy your time with your family. Hopefully you get a chance to go out there and uh, make something in your shop too. So until next time, take care.